I appreciate you so much for being here, it means a ton to me, and I promise you I'm gonna try my very best to give you as much value as humanly possible, because I really want you to take this stuff away for yourself in your own journey. I want you to become a great real estate investor yourself. So first of all, the first lesson that we have today is how to determine the ARV of any single property. And I would argue this is the most important lesson in general. If you don't understand how to calculate or determine the ARV of a property, then you don't know real estate at all. And if you don't know what ARV stands for, it's an acronym. So ARV stands for after repair value. It's basically what a house is going to be worth after it were to be fixed up. And the reason why it's so important is because how I calculate my offers and how most people calculate their offers on homes is it starts with the ARV. It starts with understanding if this house is gonna be worth this after selling, okay, now you backtrack to figure out what the offer price is. And if you don't even know what the ARV is or the value after selling, you can't figure out a good offer price and you're kind of running in blind. So that's why we're starting with this. And I've actually decided to show you this, show you how to determine ARV through Redfin. The reason why I'm choosing Redfin is because everyone has access to Redfin. I actually usually find the ARVs through something called PropStream. It's like a paid service, it's a monthly subscription. And it has a lot of the MLS data where I can determine ARVs or find comps, comparable properties. But I decided to try to do this all on Redfin so that you have an understanding to do it yourself without having to pay a service to figure out how to comp properties. So first thing I'm gonna do is I just chose a random property in Fresno, California, which is the main market of mine. And that's where you're mainly gonna be looking at homes to offer on. So random property, 1570 North Geraldine. Now, the first thing that we have to understand is to find the after repair value of any single property, all you are doing is you're finding similar properties to this property in the same kind of area, same kind of specifications or specs, like two bedrooms, one bath. As you can see, this is a two bed, one bath, similar square footage. But the only difference you're looking for the similar properties, the only difference in those properties is that they're gonna be fixed up to modern condition, or they're at least they're gonna be fixed up to the condition that you want to fix up the property for. So for example, if we look at the pictures of this property, and this is the first step that you do, you wanna figure out what's the condition of the home that we're trying to determine the ARV for. Look at the pictures. So as I can see here, uh, exterior looks actually pretty well kept, not, not bad at all. Uh, the front, well kept, this looks a little funky. You know, I see a fence right here. I'm just trying to tell you exactly what happens in my brain as I comp properties. But I see a funky fence kind of right where the door is and it makes me think, is this a bad area? Uh, why does it look funky? Will the other properties have funky looking things in the front? Because the front has a pretty big impact on the resale value. Uh, if, if it doesn't have a very good, what's called curb appeal, or you know, someone drives by, looks at the property right away. If it doesn't look good at the beginning or it looks weird, people are turned off instantly. First impressions in real estate and homes make a very big difference on the resale. So instantly I see, okay, this fence looks funky. Um, it looks very nice though, very nice, very clean. Let's see, inside, paint looks paint looks pretty decent. Floors are old, as you can see here, or at least worn. Uh, but the house looks like it's been kept in great shape. I see a wall heater right here, so now my thoughts are, okay, I might have to be budgeting for an HVAC or a, you know a heating and air unit like central air conditioning. Because if it has a wall heater, I can reasonably assume this might not have central air. It might not have air conditioning or a, you know, the HVAC is what it's called. I don't know how else to describe that. But that makes me think, okay, that's a big ticket item. I'll have to budget for that in the repairs. So these are just the things that I'm going through in my head. Uh, kitchen, very well kept, but it looks slightly dated. And if you don't know really how what I'm looking at, I'm looking at the tile. So I can see the tile countertops, uh, at least right now. Uh, this isn't tile countertops, but this is kind of outdated as well. But now what's kind of in is the quartz or granite or the nicer kind of finishes. And so I'm looking at it. It's nice. It's very clean. The backsplash kind of reminds me of like the back of a kitchen in uh, a restaurant. So. I think that feels a little outdated for me, or it looks nice actually, but I probably would replace the backsplash with something nicer if I wanted to get a higher value. And these are just little things that I'm looking at. Overall, they kept the kitchen clean. The cabinets are in good condition. So, you know, if we were to buy this home, I'm like, okay, I'd probably salvage or keep the cabinets. I don't think I'd have to do anything to them at first glance. 
I'm looking at this. The tiles look like they were kept, kept up well, the flooring there. Uh, this flooring looks better than the living room, but it still looks a little bit old and dated. You can see the difference in color right here. Let's see. And so this is just what's going in my head. The bathroom looks a lot more updated than the other areas, like in terms of this countertop, it looks nice. This part, the tile could be updated. It's, it's just green. Uh, it's, it's not super modern, but it, it's, it looks very clean and very nice. Let's look here. This is that weird funky area in the front, I think. Uh, backyard, nothing much done to it. It's just clean. It's clean, no big debris. So, and the, what is that, a garage? A shed? Does it have a shed? I don't know. So this is just generally what I first think. And, and so now, in my head, as I look at this property, I'm thinking, this is the kind of condition this home is in. It's very livable. It's very clean, very nice. So if I were to buy this today, I could have a possible second exit strategy instead of flipping the house. If I ever needed, in terms of, like, I was short on cash, I was about to go bankrupt or whatever, I knew if I bought this house at a really, really good deal, I could resell it right away if I needed the cash. And so these are the kind of things that's going on through my head as I'm looking at these houses. Because if you only have one exit strategy, if your only plan is to rent the property right away, and maybe it doesn't work, you can't find a renter, or you need to actually put a lot of work into the property, then you're kind of screwed. So my goal on every single property when I analyze these deals is I want to get these deals deep enough at disc a deep enough discount where I can have multiple exit strategies to be safe. Because right now we're in a recession and I'm realizing how important this is. I didn't realize how important the multiple exit strategies were until the recession hit. Because I'd buy a house, I'd be flipping a house. And as soon as I realize, instead of being able to sell a house for three hundred thousand, I'm probably going to get to seventy thousand. It makes me think, oh, like I should have kept kept a different exit strategy available. I should have bought a property that was maybe a little bit nicer, or maybe I should have bought at a deeper discount so I can hold as a rental. Like these different things are going through my head uh, now that we're in a recession. So first thing, that was kind of a tangent, but now we're going to go back to the comp. Now I have an idea of what the condition of the house is. The next thing we're going to do is we have to figure out what the ho house is going to be worth after it were to be modernized, fully renovated. So this house is already pretty nice, it's pretty renovated, not fully renovated though, not super modern condition. Another thing I look at is just the description to see if anything else was in the description that I didn't catch on the pictures. So let's see, I kind of skipped through uh, dual pane wind. new blinds throughout, okay. Original hardwood floors, which I could tell. Oh, it was an actual wood-burning fireplace. That didn't look like one. Let's see. Breakfast nook, stainless steel range, plenty of cabinets. Uh, okay, new lighting fixtures and ceiling fans throughout the house. That's good. Step in kitchen. Fresh paint inside and out. And the paint did look nice on the exterior and the interior, so that was... I could assume that. Newer roof, that's helpful. Newer heat, oh, heater just serviced. Newer water heater. It has a sprinkler system up front. And so I just want to get a little bit more information out of the description just to see, okay, to get a full picture of the house because when I look at the other houses to compare to, I want to know what our house is going to be. So now the first thing to do to find other houses on Redfin that are similar to this property to determine the ARV, is you click this map thing right here. You click the map, and then there's a section right here that says nearby homes for sale. I want you to click that. Now, what this pulls up, it pulls up essentially this map right here on the side. It's a 0.25 mile radius around the house. And so the house is smack dab in the center of the map. So whatever the map pulled up without you touching anything, it's right here. So this 279,000, that's where the house is located. And I try to keep a mental picture of where it's located because that's going to disappear real quick. So you're looking at a you know quarter mile radius in this map around the house. Now to comp properties, we're trying to figure out the homes that have actually sold recently that are like our property so that we can determine what ours will sell for later. And in order to determine the comps, we're not going to want to look at the active listings. These active listings, Anyone could ask for any price. Like this home right here, someone could have been asking for a million dollars and that's what it's gonna be listed on the market. People can ask for anything. We wanna look at the facts. What did the homes actually sell for that we can compare to? Because 
that's likely what we're gonna be able to sell our house for. So the first thing you're gonna do is you change this from for sale to sold. And then it's, it's gonna auto populate to the last three months. What that does is now that we're looking, now we are looking at a 0.25 mile radius of homes that have sold in the last three months. So you can see right here, it's a total of 11 different homes. I'd rather kind of filter out more so I don't have to look at 11 homes right away. I wanna figure out the homes that are similar to my property fast. And the first way you can do that is you change the specs or the filters. So home type, I believe, or it's a single family home because that's what we're looking for. I believe it was a two bed, one bath home. And if you ever forget, you can just go back to the last tab, exit out of that map. And then it says right here again, so two bed, one bath, 900 square feet. So I'm gonna go two bed. So if I click it once, it automatically goes to like two, three, four, or five bedroom homes. I, if I click the two again, it's only gonna select two. And that's what I wanna do first. Cause I wanna find homes again that are super similar to the subject property. Uh, next thing I'm gonna do is, it's a one bath home, so hopefully it has at least one bathroom. I click done. So now I'm looking at six homes, even better. So we have six homes that have sold in the last three months uh, to compare our house to. Now, the first thing that I typically do here, let me move my head real quick. I'll move it here. The first thing I usually do is I wanna figure out, okay, I wanna remember what's the zip code that our house was in, the subject property, the house that we're analyzing. If you ever forget, again, just look back at the other tab, the zip code, 93728. I try to stick to the same zip code when comparing comp, comps, like other properties. I try not to cross major cross streets. I tried not to go to different school districts. Like these things do matter, but at the end of the day, you're just trying to figure out the best possible comparable homes to determine an ARV. Like it, it's more of an art, not a science. You won't be perfect. I don't expect you to be perfect, uh, but here's how my thinking goes. So 93728 was a zip code of the subject property. The first thing I'm gonna do is I wanna compare our house to similar properties um, in that zip code. And the first thing I do in the filter is I change the sort to the high to low. And the reason why I wanna look at the high comps first is because I wanna figure out if I'm trying to determine ARV and find properties that have already been renovated and compare prices so that I can justify our price once ours is renovated, they're likely gonna be selling for more. So I'd rather not look at the low end of the list, I'd rather look at the high prices because that's probably what we're gonna get if we're gonna fix it up and flip the house. That's kind of the thing that we're thinking that we're gonna go through. So first thing I'm gonna do is, another thing I notice is um, instantly, you see this sold for 370,000. So the first thought might be, oh my gosh, like ours is gonna sell for 370,000. Well, I probably should have filtered this even more by square footage too, because as you can see here, this house, 1,900 square feet. Our house, the subject property, 900 square feet. So it's like double the square footage and it sold for a lot more. So I don't even wanna look at that comp. It's, it's not a good comparable home because the specs are so different. So if you don't want to, if you want to filter this six homes from even even more and like down more, so it filters less, uh, I'm gonna go. Sorry, let me tell you. Click this all filters button. Scroll down a little bit, and I'm gonna add square footage to the mix. So as you remember, our house that we're trying to analyze has 933 square feet. What I want to do is I want to change the square footage in the search to from 750 square feet to Let's call it 1100. I try to stay within some like plus or minus 20% of the square footage of the house. And so I, I just want it close. I don't want to be comparing 900 square foot homes to 1900 square foot homes. It just, it doesn't make sense. So now, as you can see here, it says C3 homes. It went from six homes to three homes. So now we have even condensed our search even more to hopefully have better comps. Now, so I'm looking at three comps right now. The first thing I notice on this one is that the zip code is 93705. It is not our zip code um, in terms of the subject property. Cause remember, let's, let's look back at the map real quick. Our house is located right here. Cause it's just smack dab in the middle right here. And this 310,000, it's right here. Anytime you hover over, um, when you hover over a home, it highlights in red on the map. As you can see, I hover here, boom. So. This $310,000 home, it crosses a major cross street McKinley in Fresno. And you might not know that because you might not live in Fresno, 
But uh, what you can tell for the major cross streets is if it doesn't, if it just looks like a thicker road, you know, on the map, you see this McKinley, thick road, west, thick road, Weber, thick road. So like anytime you see a bigger road than the others, it's probably a main cross street. And if it crosses a main cross street, I try to hold less value on those comparable properties when determining ARV compared to the ones that don't cross the major cross street. So I like, look, I'm looking at this comp right now. This one caught my eye because it's the same zip code. It's the same specs. You know, it's a two bed, one bath home and it's 800 square feet. Ours is 900. So this one actually sold for 270,000. And the first thing I do is I'm just gonna look at the pictures to see what it overall looked like. And another thing before I do that, I look at the location too. So our home's right here. This home right here is right here. And so as you can see, it's kind of in the same neighborhood. It's, it's not crossing any major cross streets. These are all little residential streets. And so this is going to be a much better comparable for our property, assuming it has decent you know, decent renovations or it's nicely done and not all of them do. So if I go through these pictures here, I'll make it bigger for you. If I go through these pictures, my Wi-Fi is very slow right now. I'm on vacation, but okay. Front looks very nice. Actually front is very nice, clean up kept interior. I can see the floor here is much more modern than our subject property. The paint looks kind of fresh, like kind of new. As you can, I'm just looking, the paint looks clear or clean at least. Yeah, modern, a little wear and tear on the floor, but it's, it's still more modern than ours. So it's a better renovation. Uh, I, I think this is staged. You can kind of tell if something looks a little staged. Like, I think this is staged. Uh, this countertop, is that tile? No, that's like a granite. So granite countertops, it's a nicer, newer kitchen than our subject. The cabinets look nice as well. Yeah, super nice cabinets. Tile backsplash looks a little bit, a lot more modern than ours that has like that, that kitchen, that back kitchen restaurant kind of feel. Uh, the kitchen looks very nice. Like everything looks pretty modern. Uh, bathroom, tile, tile tub, but it still looks clean. Much more modern bathroom. You can see with the, the kitchen sink right here, uh, cabinets, the lighting. Yeah, they did a very, is this, this, this might've been a flip. It might have been. I'm not positive, but overall I'm looking at this house and I can tell this house is a nicer house than our subject property, just from looking at it. Um, ours is nice. It's actually surprisingly nice and not a lot of the times it will be, but this is a nicer home than ours. And what that tells me is that if this whole home I can see here sold two months ago and it's in this nice condition, um, even though it's a hundred square foot less than the subject property, which is the subject property, 900 square feet. Even though it's less square footage, I can probably reasonably assume that if our property, the subject property, were to be fixed up or renovated to this level of property, I could reasonably assume the ARV or it's gonna sell for around 270,000. That's how you determine ARV. You just have to do this enough to find properties that are similar, but more renovated and assume the ARV. However, we are in a recession right now, so that's not what the ARV actually is in this moment. See, in a normal market where prices are standard and normal, this is what I would claim the ARV to be. I would say, okay, if I were to buy this property right here that we're analyzing, I'd assume I'd have to buy at a massive discount, fix it up, and resell it at $270,000. That's what I would assume in a normal market. We are in a recession right now. The prices that houses have sold for six months ago are drastically different than what they've sold today. And to give you some background, it, it's happening exactly to me on my flips right now. This is my first recession I'm going through, and I, I want you to understand how it would feel if you were in this position. Let's say you had a flip that you had going on. You planned to sell it for $260,000 because that's what the numbers said. But once the recession hit, you realize you won't be able to sell it for $260,000 you might be able to get $230,000. So that's a $30,000 drop or a hit on the profit. That's what's happening now. So how we're adjusting for that in our ARVs when we're crunching the numbers is if I see and I determine an ARV to have a house is 270,000 by the book or by the standard on, on paper, I budget 10% down. And if you don't know what I mean by that, 10% 
of 270,000 is $27,000. Let's just call it $30,000 to keep it simple. So if I were to normally budget an ARV of $270,000 in a normal market, I am going to budget the ARV to be $240,000. Yes, it might seem drastic, but just with that example I gave you, that's what's happening. And I'm realizing how hard the market was hit. And so if it continues to trend downward, this market, I want to be ready. I want to be prepared. I don't want to take 30K hits anymore on the profit. That th Those things hurt. And so when you're analyzing these deals in the ARVs, realize in this recession, or if we are in a recession, if you're in a recession analyzing these deals, budget down 10%. Uh, it might be different in every market, but in my market with my price point, 10% seems to work really well for me. So I would determine our property, this property, is worth $240,000 after fixing up. Now, if you're not sure how, or if you're not confident in determining that after looking at just one comp or a couple comps, just look back at the others. So I can look back here, and even though this was in a different zip code, I, I still want to get an idea of what kind of condition this one was in too, um, just to see. And this one was super modern. So this one was much nicer than both of ours. And you can just tell from the pictures, like the, the flooring is much better done, super modern white, which is very in style right now. Um, so yeah, this one's just much more modern. And it makes, so it just makes sense that this one sold for 310,000. Even though it's across the street, I'm not gonna assume ours would sell for 310. It just gives us a better picture. Now, another thing we're looking at is just other comps. So this one's the same zip code as ours, same kind of specs, but it sold for 195. And it kind of makes you wonder, why would this one sell for 195,000 and this one you know, sold for 270,000? The most likely reason is probably in much worse condition. But when you see this image right here, it usually does not have pictures. So I'm just gonna click it anyways, just kind of show you. Usually, yeah, it doesn't have pictures and it doesn't have a true description. The description is just stats about when the home sold. So you can't really truly understand what the situation was this house, this house was in, but it still can give you an idea. So now, comping properties, it's not always as easy as this. For some reason, I actually got a good uh, home to comp because I had a good comparable home to compare it to. But let's assume something. Let's assume that we didn't find this good comp right here. Let's let's say that we I, this didn't exist and, and I was just stuck. I was like, hey, okay, I don't have a comp. We're in a 0.25 mile radius. Like, what do I do now? The first thing I want you to do, given this recession, is actually to extend the distance just a little bit. I want you to extend the distance of your search. Now how you do that is on the map, don't like move the map around because you want the home to stay in the center of the map, but press this minus button. You want to zoom out the map. So when you press that minus button, it changes from being a 0.25 mile radius search to about a half mile radius search. And so that's, that's all you have to do. And as you can see, actually no other homes popped up. Now let's assume you, this is still, we still don't have any other good comps. Like this is the only comp and let's say this one didn't exist. If that were the case, I don't want you to have to do this, but you can at last resort move back six months for comps. And the reason why I'm so hesitant on this is because in this recession, like I said, six months ago, you, you were selling a house for like $300,000 sell that same house today, it's selling for 270. So everything's taken a hit and you just wanna be very careful when you're using a comp from six months ago. So I'm gonna do it just so you can kind of see what happens if you get stuck and you can't find a comp. But look, I moved back six months and again, we're, we, let's say we didn't, never saw this one. Uh, we have this one. This one sold um, for 252,000 and the, the specs are similar and it's our same zip code. Um, again, you have to having to assume that our property is around, actually right right around there. It's like a neighbor. That that could be a pretty good comp, but it sold on August sixteenth. And how long ago is that? Let me see. I don't want to do math in my head. It's December now. This is August. Okay, sold three months ago, which is not bad. So a little, it sold over a little three months ago. Still a great comp, um, and you can just tell right here. It's, it'll say this whole home sold three months ago or six months ago. Uh, I look at this. We can look at the photos. Uh, okay, not super nice condition. It's livable. House appears to be very livable. Mm, 
let me see, super outdated. Everything's outdated, all just original, uh, but house is very nice. So yeah, everything's outdated. Like everything would need to be modernized if the plan was to flip it. So it's actually kind of a good sign because you realize, okay, look, three months ago, this house, not even renovated, sold for $252,000, not renovated. So that gives us a pretty good indicator to paint a good picture of, okay, if this was renovated, how, what would I do? So um, he, here's kind of the thought process here. This is again, assuming that we never found that really good comp earlier. Let's say this is the only good comp that we could find, the only good comparable property. What I would do then is I would have to make my best guess. I would have to say, okay, this home sold for $252,000 three months ago, and it was not fully renovated. If it was fully renovated, I think it would sell for at least $10,000 more, at least. And I, I think it would sell for at least like, you know, $20,000 more, but at least $10,000 more. And so maybe I'll budget for that. So maybe if I was trying to come up with an ARV, I would think, okay, if this was my only option in determining a comp, I would say, I, I don't think it would sell for $252,000, our comp, if we fixed it up. I think it would sell for $262,000. And so that's exactly how I would, I would determine this ARV. However, same thing applies. Recession hits. If your normal assumption is that ARV is 262,000, we're going to be budgeting that 10% uh, down. So 262,000, it's about 25K. Uh, I'll just call it 30 to be extra conservative. But 262,000 minus 30,000 is 232,000. That's where I would place the ARV of the house. Um, and that's exactly how I would do it. And I would do that again only if I did not have this, uh, only if I didn't have this other good comp. So that, that's kind of how you do it. If you ever get stuck, you know, again, you want to start with a smaller search first. So, like I said, we're starting with a 0.25 mile radius first. We're starting with the same exact specs. We're trying to filter by square footage. So you look at the least amount of homes and waste the least amount of time. And if you cannot find anything in the small radius and the small search, expand a little bit expand the distance first, and then if needed, you can expand the time frame. Just be very cautious with the time frame. And if you only maybe found a comp from six months ago, and that's the only comp you found that could even apply, then instead of budgeting 10% down on the ARV, whatever ARV you calculate, I want you to budget 20% down from whatever ARV you calculate. So like I said, if, if we're looking six months back, you find a comp that was sold six months ago because we're in a recession, whatever ARV you calculate from that, budget 20% down around. And hopefully you can do the math on that. I hope I don't have to explain that. Just do the same thing we did with the 10% and we should be just fine. So that is how you comp properties. Uh, I try to give different scenarios for you to understand what happens or what you do in different scenarios. And I think I covered the majority of them. So if you have any other questions, reach out to me. But this is the first training video, super excited for you. I, I just gave you everything on comping. Hope this helps, see you at the next one.